Hi everyone, I'm Hales and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the two dresses that I made for the Frugal Frocks Challenge. Both, so that's two dresses from using two different free sewing patterns and using fabric that I already had in my stash. If you want to see my plans video of what I talked about some other free sewing patterns, I will link that video down below in the description box. So I'm wearing one of them and I don't know if you, any of you guessed that I would use the Lady McElroy fabric. So this is the cotton fabric. I think it's a cotton lawn. Oh, just got my necklace. And I made the Stitch Sisters Kaftan. Now this is a free pattern on the Stitch Sisters blog on their website. So if you just Google it, I will also, I'll put a link to the two dress patterns that I've made down in the description box below. If you wanna know all the details about anything, sizing and everything, just check out that description box because I'm just gonna put it all in there rather than shove everything at you in the video like now. So this is about the reveal. I have got some footage that I filmed I'll put in here of like twirls and you can then see how it flows and that kind of thing. So I decided to make the full length kaftan. I originally was going to make the length um, just like knee length, but I had over, I think I had over three meters of this fabric. And so I didn't want to be left with like a funny length. And I thought, do you know what? I've had this fabric for a year, sat in my drawers. I just don't want to be too precious about it. Some fabrics you just never want to cut into. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go for it. So this is the kaftan. Now, as I am five foot three, I shortened it because let me just get my notepad. The original pattern, which is literally just a series of rectangles. And one of the reasons why I picked this pattern is that I didn't need to print anything out. So the original one, says to cut a length, so like for the full length of the front and the back for 56 inches. So I shortened that to 53 inches. It then does have side vents. And so it tells you to um, do those side vents. Like I think it's about, off the top of my head, I think it's about 20 inches up from the bottom. Is it 20 inches? I don't know if I said it. But it's so many inches up from the bottom, which I did, and then because obviously because I'd shortened it, it was like halfway up my thigh, so I then had to stitch some of it down. So I don't know, the side vents may open up higher if you make them, but I just shortened, I just reduced the amount and just sewed them up. It, does that make sense? Probably not. And my, our cat is at the door. If you've watched any of my Friday Sews videos, I have a playlist for Friday Sews videos, if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you check out my channel page and click on um, playlists, there is one for Friday Sews, and it's a weekly catch-up video of sewing and bits and pieces. And our cat always likes to interrupt me when I'm filming, so I'll see if I can get away with it, but I may have to go and let him in. So, I shortened the V-neck by one inch because it just seemed quite low. Now. This basically is a series of rectangles and then just a few simple instructions on the blog. Now, according to your sort of like chest measurement and waist measurement and things, they tell you what size rectangles to cut and also the V-neck. So if I think I made the size, I made the size 14. So from that, it tells you, so you have your rectangle, it tells you how many, I think it's inches, inches across to go at the top of the rectangle and then how many inches down and then you just draw a straight line and that's your V and makes the V neck but I thought it looked quite low on them and as I'm short waisted I thought that's going to sit even lower on me and I sort of held it up and I thought I got my tape measure out and measured out the ten and a half inches I think it was and I thought no I need to make that an inch shorter so I did that before I cut it and that was absolutely fine. The trickiest thing about cutting the actual pattern was cutting the pieces straight and because they are a long piece. Because I have this rule, which is, um, it's in centimetres, so it's 59 centimetres long. That's it. So I don't have anything which is gonna, you know, you can just cut straight down. And I didn't wanna, I could have cut templates out of paper or card, which are the right size, then cut round them. But I was trying to be frugal. I was trying not to use resources that I didn't need. So I literally just laid the tape measure out and sort of marked it with some chalk and then sort of did some dashes down and then across and then just cut it. So actually cutting out was probably the longest part of this process of making the dress. I'm, I'm really pleased with it actually because I did think, oh, it's gonna look too long, but I think because I shortened it, it's just the right sort of length. And here you've got the ties. Now I've wrapped them around the back, but you can do it. So you wrap them around the front and then around the back 
and then you could have a shorter tie at the waist so there is you know there's a couple of options open to you but it just cinches that in because without it I'll put a, probably put a photo in because it's a bit easier to show you but without it it's really shapeless so yeah so I do think having that tie just nips you in at the waist and it just Although it's still loose, and obviously you can loosen those waist ties, it just gives a nice airy feeling to it. So that is dress number one, and let me just grab dress number two. I haven't put dress number two on, I do have footage of me wearing it, but I wanted to really show you the inside of the dress, which I can't do, because I don't feel like flashing to everybody on camera. So this is dress number two, and this is the Cypress dress by Mood Fabrics. Now this is the one I just... The, I'll put a photo here because the Cypress dress has sleeves and it has a belt but somebody had made on the Mood website they'd made a, a sleeveless version and it was just on a mannequin and there weren't really any details for that so I did think oh, I'll have a go now obviously because I was making a sleeved dress into a sleeveless dress I knew that I would have to make a few adjustments to the armhole so I did raise the armhole and I added to the back and then only once I made it I realised I hadn't added to the front so it does sort of cut away more than it should do and that's purely because I forgot to add um, I forgot to add extra fabric to the front armhole I did it to the back but not the front so that's why it might be sitting open a bit more now I did make my own I was very proud of myself because not only did I make my own bias binding for the caftan um but I because that's how the neck band is like sealed you make your own um, bias binding I also then was on a roll and so I made let me get it off the hanger I made some for the armholes of here as well so where the dress is there and then just did a few hand stitches um, just to, I didn't want to machine it because I don't have any purple thread and I was trying not to spray any notions. So I've literally just hand picked some um, stitching in there so you can't see them. Because I think if you're doing it in a plain fabric you'd notice it more but um, with pattern fabric you can't really tell. I did line the skirt and I found some fabric which is actually was curtain lining for my parents old curtains. So I didn't have to buy any lining. I was trying to use absolutely everything that I already have. And kind of right down to the buttons, I found the buttons. Let me just stand up. I don't know if you can see. So these buttons here, they were actually from, sorry, my memory card just was full, so it just cut out on me. So I was just showing you the buttons that I actually got from a craft pack that my kids used to use when they were little. And so they are quite generic, but I managed to get them, I think they're more or less all the same size, just various shades of purple. So they're nothing fancy. They're just ones I would normally do craft with, but I thought that would do the job. And the lining, so it's the cream lining here. And I realized that I attached the um, lining the wrong to the wrong side of the seams. So then it was all overlooked, it was all rough. So I wanted to sort of, what I should have done is had the lining up, attached it, and then flipped the lining down, but I forgot, and so I'd saved it the wrong way around. So I also had some bias binding from ages ago, just like a small off cut of this gingham, and then I've just stitched that over the overlock seam, just so it wasn't rough rubbing against my back. Now, now to the annoying part of this dress. I did think it was gonna be a bit annoying because it's facings, and it has this strange collar. So it has this collar, that you just kind of fold down at the back and then that forms the collar at the front and there is interfacing in there but it's just it just doesn't sit flat and the um it's really tricky to show a pattern fabric isn't it so it it's supposed to sit like this but it kind of like rolls out and you have to like tuck these bits in all the time and tuck all the way around and it just it's not great. I actually put the buttons lower down, so my first button I actually put here because I felt it was like really high up and it just, it felt a bit too sort of formal and a bit sort of like, you know, not, I was going to say prudish, but it just seemed very like, oh, I must cover up, I mustn't show any cleavage, even though it was nowhere near, like, you know, it was just, it just felt a funny length, basically. So I thought by putting a button lower down, I can open out that collar because 
when it's up like that, the colour was just all like, it's not a favourite make of mine, I'll be honest with you, but I wanted to give it a go. I did do a narrow shoulder adjustment on this because I measured a shoulder piece of a pattern that I've made before which fits me quite well, which I've adjusted against this one here. Now the mood patterns are combined sizing, so it's 12 from 14 and a 16, 18. So I did a 12 slash 12, 14 up here, grading out to a 16, 18. One thing I forgot to do, I forgot to measure, was the fact that the waistline was too low on me. So I normally take an inch out of the inch out of the length of bodices. I didn't this time, and then where it was sitting was like it wasn't sitting on my waist. So I unpicked the skirt and then chopped a little bit off and then reattached the skirt, but it's not quite enough because it's still sitting. It's sort of like sitting at a funny length and the button is kind of causing things to gape a bit because of the way the way the it's not sitting on my natural waist and it should do and that's my fault because I didn't check the length of the bodice and um, there was something else oh yes so I made a twirl of this made a muslin and it was too big I think it was like because it was a 16 18 at the bust and I needed that for the waist it was it was too big so I thought I now I'll just take some off it and what I didn't do is double check the muslin against the paper pattern to get an exact thing. I just thought, oh yeah, I need to just take off about a centimetre off there, cut it off. It was too tight. The buttons were popping open. So, once again, getting away with the pattern fabric, I added a panel in. So this is under the arm. And actually, I don't know, can you see that there? So I've got this pit here. You see the seam lines? along there and I just added in on both sides just add in a triangular wedge just to give more space and it meant that I could then button it up. I'm glad I made it because I always want to learn new techniques and try new patterns and new designs and see how they fit, fit on me but I can see that this one may be getting donated once the charity shops are back open again. At the bottom I um, it was quite short, it's quite a short dress so I added self-made bias binding and then just flip the hem up with the bias binding so I didn't have to lose much at all so it only took a tiny bit off the bottom because most of it is bias binding that's flipped up it's just taken that raw ridge in and then I've literally just machined it am I even showing so there we go so um then I just machine hemmed all around the bottom so that's it so they are my two patterns for the Frugal Fox Challenge 2021. I will see you in Friday Sews. Don't forget to check out that playlist for Friday Sews.